Hey, hey world. world, Reverend Saint here. I am Reverend Megan. We are two queer black women. We are ordained ministers who really love God, God and love to cut up, love to get down and get real. We move by the spirit, the beat, and our authentic being. We are ready to share our truth and our journey of love, life, and liberation. This is our time and our space to simply be. We, we are, are two, two Rebs, Rebs with, no, with church. no church. Gathering all those who want to get into the conversation about faith, hope, hope and love. What up world? So this is Two Revs, No Church. We wanna thank you for tuning in if you're watching visually or tuning in if you're listening on whatever device you choose to listen on. We are about to get into it. So I am Reverend Megan. And I'm Rev the Saint. And we are here, <laughs> we are here just to, just to not be totally reverent, but also to bring our human selves, right? So what we're gonna talk about today is, what we're talking about is being weary and well-doing, being tired. <laughs> tired. And I'm tired. Yeah, yeah, when you just tired. Why, why, why you, let's start there. Cause you know, we, we, we said we would be transparent to the folks. So, so tell them why you're tired. Oh man, so I mean by the time this this is released, it will be this season will have far far be far past surpassed this moment in time. But I've been tired this season. Um I think mainly um because of transition, you know, the world is <laughs> is, is 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 filled with quick transition. And I am supposed to be preaching on Pentecost tomorrow. And this morning I woke up with a lot of energy. I got up, cleaned my home, just grounded myself. Um, it's a, always a good thing when I'm like really cleaning. And um, I left this church, you know, I left, I left not this church, I left the church. And I was just tired of, you know, the brick and mortar, the same doctrines and just the same, just things that just doesn't align well with where my spiritual being is trying to become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I, 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 I told this church that I would preach for them on, on Pentecost. And then I woke up and said, you know, I don't want to be in that space. And, and, I, and I reached out to the pastor telling them exactly how I felt. And they, and they later on responded and said, you know, go with your spirit. But as I'm cleaning, Maggie, that's what that's what you know the Lord grow grab. Hope. I don't I know, I didn't hear this story. So y'all about to see a real time reaction. Go ahead. So as I'm cleaning, um, and it was usually I have music on when I'm cleaning. This particular day today, I didn't have anything on. I was just cleaning my house in silence. And it's in the moments of silence that we can really hear the genuine, hmm, talking about, yes, how with Thurman, the voice of the genuine comes in. And, um, and remembering what I was meditating on yesterday with Muji, um, I am that, right? Um, and thinking about that and the voice of the genuine and all that kept on resonating with me at the time, as much as um, I am tired and, and, and feeling weary. Um, the soul is saying, you need, you need to do this. This is something you need to do, not for them, but for yourself, you know, and affirming myself that I am the one to do that. I am that, you know, so, so again, taking Howard Thurman, um, ancestral, who's in the ancestral plane and Muji, who's a Hindu, you know, I've been meditating on Muji a lot lately and realizing that um, there was a fear. There was a fear that was keeping me from preaching on Pentecost, but also knowing that I need to, in the, in the scripture in itself, I, my, my mother, you know, is one of my mother's favorite scriptures that's um, on the, uh, lectionary on uh, will these dry bones live you know mm -hmm. my mom has uh, myeloma cancer and so I remember the first time my mom ever visited me in Philadelphia uh, Bishop Flunder uh, preach on that and so uh, it's just so much history around Pentecost around the text around like just the season I'm in and as much as I want to go out in the woods and be with the birds and the trees and I can do that because my service is late um, God is saying, no, you need to, you need to go 
before the people and speak. And, 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 and let me say this, these are also a group of people, a congregation that I was really hurt by, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and still feel being pulled and called and drawn to speak to even those who have hurt you, who mm -hmm. have, um, rather intentionally or unintentionally. And that's the thing with this call, Megan, you know? I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it, we, we said, we made these topics up a while ago. Mm -hmm. And the subtopic of this is, is when the word and the world don't line up. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. and we did this a while mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. I mentioned that because I knew it was gonna hit her like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, here's the thing, right, is that, and I'm, I'm going to say this as I'm being given it, so I, I, I pray I, I get out of the way, is that a lot of the times our, we crowd ourselves with everything but, mm. with everything but what you, what Rev the Saint just said, what you just said, and being in to use the Howard Thurman quote you just used, being in, in the presence of the silence, of the genuine voice, right? We crowd every, so I'm gonna say I. I sometimes crowd my, my criteria. I sometimes crowd myself. Spirit, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I sometimes crowd myself with everything but. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you, and I'm talking about myself and collective you, uh, when, so I'll say we, when we stop or when we allow ourselves to be good enough to ourselves to understand that the quiet is not, is not going to tell us what we aren't, it's going to tell us everything we are. I should. I should. It's going to tell us everything. Thing we are. We crowd ourselves with the noise, with the people, with the this, with the that, because we are trying to affirm and validate who we are. And nothing can do that. And except no and no one can do that except the quiet. Except the quiet. So I know I get tired a lot. And when I get tired, what I understand is I've been running someone else's cycle and race for too long. I don't care if the too long is the last two hours. I don't care if the too long has been all day. I don't care if the too long has been the last three days. I don't care what the length of time is, but I feel the heaviness when I realize that I've been crowding myself with everything but what has created me. Yeah. What has created me. Yeah. And, I, and, and that's where I find myself. Like I've been in when I tell you I've been enjoying myself, you know what I mean? And, and that's the thing, but it, everything comes with balance, right? You know, mm -hmm. we get to this point where like, oh yeah, like I'm getting back to the rhythm with being with by myself and I, I'm enjoying myself and we can't stay isolated too long, mm -hmm. you know, and we can't be in the party too long. You yeah. know, it comes, it comes with the balance. And then, you know, and it's like, you see the world, you know, I was having a conversation talking about seeing the world. Like I'm really seeing the world for the first time. I was having a conversation uh, with, with a, I would say a mentee. Um, and I remember uh, she was sharing some things and I was just listening. Then it really, there was a lot of things that she said resonated with me that I could say, oh, that's me too. And I didn't, I didn't do that, I just listened. And she asked me a question and, um, I think it was like, what is bringing you joy these days? And I was like, you know what? The thing that's bringing me joy is rest. Um, because I find reality in my sleep, in my dream state. Because every, every time I wake up, what I see, excuse my language, this shit ain't real. <laughs> <laughs> ain't none of it real. You know, it's, you know we, we are all performing. We are all like you know, trying to like flex our personality or, or what we think we are and who we are and our being and, and 
you know, to show off our stuff, you know, social media. And I'm like, I enjoy being in my dreams because number one, I release full control. Mm-hmm. My subconscious is playing and it is able to show me some things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoy it. Like I, you know, I enjoy seeing and getting visits from people I haven't seen in a while, rather dead or alive. Like I've been dreaming about past past um high school friends and um and and my grandparents and just just a lot of things and even having dreams about my former self my younger self my you know we always talk about the inner child like she's visited me sometimes Mm -hmm. and so um that in itself is a particular type of silence and Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. in itself is teaching me Mm -hmm. you know um and I'm not weary you know I'm like yo what When's the next nap time? <laughs> well, I wish I could be part of that nap ministry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Sometimes there's nothing to say. Mm. When, when the world doesn't add up with the word. You take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word in the charge. I'm back. <laughs> You take a nap. You take a nap. Yeah. Whether that's a physical nap or whether that's I'm walking through the woods nap, whether that's a I'm a watching me a good movie nap, whether that's a I'm about to go buy my favorite beer, mine is St. Bernardis. I'm about to go buy my favorite beer and sit in my house and just stare out the window type of nap. But you yeah. need to take a nap. Take a nap. You need to take a nap. I, I, Cause I'm a reverend, but I, I'm Megan first. I I'm Megan first. Um, I am Bertha Mae Brown's grandbaby. Um, I am Empress's mother. Um, I am an artist. I am a spiritual being. Um, I'm an educator. I'm a black woman. I think that those are uh, aspects of me that are pretty big umbrellas that will fit. Uh, other smaller nuanced uh, aspects of who I am. That's that's what I would say. I would say first I'm Bertha Mae Brown's grandbaby mm-hmm. and I am Empress's mother. I work in local government in like youth development. Uh, and then I also do workshops and that sort of thing. And I am also a visual artist. It took me a long time to actually get to a point to actually call myself an artist, but yes. um, I am a visual artist. So what do you think was blocking you from understanding and coming forward and saying, yes, I'm a visual artist? Because I think many of us go through that with owning our creativity and owning our space. Yeah, I think it was, um, man, I think it was, it it was quite a few things, right? I think one of them being, um, I'm a, I am good academically. I have been good academically probably my whole life. Like I've been a good, a good student and because I've been socialized, um, in, in a particular type of environment to prioritize certain European validation machines, uh, there's aspects of me professionally as an artist that I, that I would not allow myself to accept because it has not been validated by one of those institutions that had so long told me, um, A, you got an A, you're doing great, you, you know, or you're a good student or you're good at this. Um, I didn't have that. And I had been social, I had been socialized and had kind of really bought into, uh, these are the things that make an artist. I don't have these things. I didn't study because I'm self-taught. So I never went to school for art, always drew and painted and uh, did sort of those sort of things. But um, I think that had some, some of it, some things to do with it. I think there's also ways in which um, when I would do things, when I would create art, uh, I was always told by my mom how beautiful and how good it was and how nice it was, but also how it wasn't um a serious profession you know i need to do i need to do something serious um and that wasn't really serious so i think that's what that's a bit of what kept me from calling myself an artist Mm. so rev desain and i have the privilege and honor to see your queer religion exhibition in baltimore yeah so tell us how that came about 
Tell us how the title came about. Tell us how that creative work. Just tell us everything because there are some people who are probably falling off in their chairs right now. Like, what? What are they talking about queer religion? So tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so tell you how it came about. I'll I'll try to you know give you a nugget of it. Um, it came from a conversation that I had with a young person. Um, <clears throat> This young person uh, was queer identified and also um, very connected to her church and religious beliefs and that sort of thing and was kind of like struggling with her identity as a queer uh, embodied person and also things that she uh, had believed that like her religion told her like you can't be both of these at the same time. And the thing that was striking to me is that she would question that she was anything other than divine, because that's pretty much all, you know, um, or that um, somehow her queerness kept her from that. But it was, I feel like there was very key aspects of her queerness that contributed to her divinity. Mm. Um, and so I just started thinking about and looking at the ways in which some religions, uh, there's this erasure of uh, queer beings in uh, text, in conversation, and sometimes even um, folks are damned or condemned or exiled or uh, told that they don't belong because of their queerness in those spaces. So in thinking more about that, um, that was the beginning of me conceptualizing uh, queer religion, just to kind of embrace the space in which uh, queer bodies and religion and spirituality um, coexist very naturally. Can you share one of those pieces with us? Um, like one of the, the your, maybe your whatever piece you want to share and just describe it to us um, and to our audience. Um, that particular piece, what religion um, or faith inspired this piece and your process? Sure. So um, you want me to share the actual visual? If you can, please. Yeah, yeah. I totally can. I totally can. Um, absolutely. So I'm pulling it up now. And as I'm talking, as I'm pulling it up, um, one of the things that was really important to me in doing uh, this particular series is making sure that I told stories from multiple vantage points and not only took queer um, queer bodies and kind of like reincarnate or reimagine them in spiritual texts, but also identified texts wherein the in the original story, this person was queer. Uh, cause there's a lot of that and there's not a, enough, I would say talk or conversation or exploration, um, of that. So I'll share, I guess the flyer from it, um, would probably be one of the most like popular images. Actually, you know what I will do? I will go to my, um, IG to pull it up. Um, and when, one of the things that I think it's important in um, adding these multiple stories from multiple different religions uh, is also to acknowledge, uh, to kind of emphasize uh, the lack of separation. A lot of times when folks, I feel like, go to our exhibitions, uh, a thing that happens is there is this separation from uh, art and the artist, and there's also a separation from uh, art and culture. And it was really important to me to make sure that not only was the art being explored and highlighted, but also that there was this emphasis on culture. So in doing that, that meant to not only talk about um, the images and the pieces or the stories behind them, but also bring kind of work on focus on bringing the audience into the experience. So some of what you were able to experience was the the dance that first happened, angelic uh, outfit, so to speak, uh, embodied this embattled angel, like an angel that was at war with themselves. And that is the, um, the origin of the whole thing. And then a poet um, about, you know, the ways in which queer folks show up in spaces and how folk, other people respond to them. All of that was uh, a part of like creating that environment, creating the culture um, and, and having space where everyone felt 
not just welcome, but like this was specifically created for you. Not like I have something set up and you could come over if you want, but like I, I made this uh, with you in mind. There we go, I can share now. So I'm actually sharing my full screen, but here's uh, two pieces from it. Let's see, can I make this bigger? There we go. Um, and this is just uh, two pieces, Adam and Eve. And in this one, Adam is A-T-O-M, Adam. Um, and then uh, Eve. Um, there they have gold. So if you look at Eve, she has the gold behind her. She's also adorned in the gold. Um, I made Adam in a particular way where you, for example, uh, in the area where Adam's genitalia would be, I really just wanted it to be gold. I didn't really want to define the area. I want it to be kind of like a a undefined um, space. And in that, I made sure that I also wrote this uh, post to kind of describe and explain uh, some of some of the reason, some of the reasoning behind this series and some of the reasoning behind these particular images. If you like, I could read that. If not, we could, we could ask me another question. No, go ahead and read it. All right. So I start with um, conceptualizing it. So this, the title of this is Adam and Eve. The conceptual influence for the influences for this series and why representation of QPOC in art matters. Um, so I start with talking about um, this um, scholar uh, by the name of Cohen. So Cohen highlights the how the intersection of queerness and race can further cause QPOC people to feel even more marginalized. Um, in her book Punks, Bull Daggers, and Welfare Queens, she asks, "How do queer activists?" understand and relate politically to those whose same sex sexual identities position them within a category of queer, but who hold their category or hold their identities based on class, race, gender. It's a lot of jargon. Um, but basically it talks, it explores like the queer politic uh, and it frequently focuses on the concerns of, of the most privileged in that community. So even when we have conversations around queerness, it's usually white, um, gay white men who are leading that conversation. So it's like, even within that marginalized uh, place, how do we activate that? Um, all right, I feel like I've been, all right. All right. <laughs> No, something important that you said is that I think we are so taught, especially those that are seen, that are experiencing life from the margins, we are taught to separate ourselves and kind of dissect who we are based on uh, where we show up. So it's even in religion, even in spiritual spaces, uh, we aren't taught to bring the fullness. I mean, church does not teach us to bring the fullness of ourselves. So I, I think uh, this creative work that you're doing really shines a light and helps folks, especially uh, QPOC folks, to come forward and bring the fullness of who they are. So I think it's wonderful. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, I think that that aspect that you just shared in terms of there are spaces we're in, um, only aspects of our intersection are welcome. Uh, you may go into a Black church and they want your Blackness, but not your queerness. You may go into queer spaces. Uh, we, we are all for queer rights, but we really don't want to hear about that Black stuff. One of the things that I wanted to create in not only the art, but it, um, in the exhibition experience is a space where people felt like that they could bring their full self, their spiritual self, their sexual self, uh, their queer self, their God loving self. Um, all of those things can be embodied in a, in a single individual. Amen. Ashe, that's a good place to end. Thank you so much, Rashid, for your time. Thank you for being with Two Res No Church. Thank you for being our friends. We appreciate you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Two Res No Church is powered by the Saint Media, Jiggy Jazz Production, and B. Paul Mobley. Two Revs No Church is sponsored by Pennsylvania Southeast Conference of the United Church of Christ.